Welcome to Soup Chat, the third and final instalment in this series for 2023, as part of the Waitaki Super Soup Sipper event. In this episode, we're going to get a little cheesy, catching up with Stevie from Whitestone Cheese and Bevan from Badger and Mackerel. But first, I caught up with Leanne from Craftwork Brewery and an interesting recipe. Cheese and wine for me go together. Cheese and beer or ale, I've never really sort of thought of it, but uh, talking with Leanne from Craftwork Brewery, that's what you're going to get in the Waitaki Super Soup Sipper, the farmhouse cheese and ale soup. Leanne, what was the inspiration behind it? Uh, Because we're a brewery, I thought we need to make a soup that's got beer in it. But the cheese element, how did that come about? Well, I found a recipe for beer and cheese soup, and we have great cheese in the district, so... There you go, Bob's your uncle. Beer and cheese. Beer and cheese, uh, two of the favourite things. Uh, so what's in it? Uh, our beer, it's a Citron Soleil, which is a Saison, which has black pepper, lemon zest and coriander seeds, which pair beautifully with uh, the red pepper and the cheese, which is a white stone Tetra Tasty. So that combination, yeah, that just sounds so welcoming. Mm. Yeah, we've had a good response. It's, yeah, it's a delicious soup. We serve it with a rye bread. And the rye bread choice, uh, you just find it partners really well? Uh, yeah, because it's sort of rustic and farmhouse. So farmhouse means, like the, the beer is called a farmhouse ale because... 200 years ago, you couldn't drink the water. Farmers would make these saisons for their farm workers to drink. They were only about 2%, ours is 7 <laughs> But it was safer than drinking the water, which could kill you, because you boil the water to make the beer. Hence the word farmhouse ale. And the cheese, yeah, cheese comes from farms. Uh, and the original recipe was probably from Germany, taken to Wisconsin in the States. So the Americans will claim the credit for it? Uh, Maybe just from Wisconsin. (laughs) (laughs) So that soup obviously is on through the month of September. Um, If people are really keen on having a go at making it themselves, how can they go about that? Oh, I guess we could print out a recipe. And you can sell them the beer for it too? That's right. And the cheese is nearby. Very good. Uh, just tell us a wee bit about craft work and, um, and, and the range of ales that you do. Uh, we make mostly Belgian-style beer, and that country has the most beer in the world, most beer styles available. So farmhouse ales, uh, abbey styles, which are the things that the monks make. So these fairly strong, malty, yeasty, delicious beers, and also sour beers, barrel-aged sours. So we make spontaneous fermented fermented beers where we uh, put the wort, the warm beer liquid, out in the open air and collect the airborne yeast. Pop it in a barrel for a year. You need lots of patience to make these beers. Uh, and they are really delicious. We do fruited, fruited ones uh, using local apricots, sour cherries uh, and raspberries. That's incredible. Where did, where did the idea for craft work come from? We were both uh, home brewing in our separate houses, Michael and I, um, brewing Belgian styles because we couldn't really buy them. We love Belgian beer. You can buy quite a lot of Belgian beer in New Zealand now, but that is why we, we, how we started, was just brewing, home brewing what we like to drink. And then we just... Entered some competitions, won some medals. People said, you should sell your beer. It's really great. So we did. We started a brewery under my house, 50 litres. We have now expanded to a 500-litre kit, so we're still pretty small. But not under the house? No. (laughs) (laughs) You'd run out of room pretty quickly. And you actually, um, you send your beer. It's not just here in Omaru. It's it's all over the country. Oh, yeah. We've always uh, sold nationwide. Yeah, we have a distributor, so... Um, we have outlets in Omaru, but we've always sold around New Zealand. Mm, now, what was the expression about kid in a candy store? I think that is just about the ultimate cheese and Belgian-inspired beer in a brewery. Doesn't get much better than that. I also caught up with Bevan Smith from the Badger and Mackerel and asked him about his soup. 
No badgers were harmed in the making of uh, the soup that's on offer down at Badger and Mackerel. Talking with Bevan, beautiful sounding soup with the pumpkin, roast pumpkin, roast apple and garlic. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, um, well, it makes a change from the boiled soups you can get. But we find, like, making a roasted soup with the big commercial ovens we've got, we can, we can layer it all out and, you know, nice and flat, get that caramelisation going. And soups are all about um, extracting as much flavour as you can. You can do that with spices, herbs and stuff. We feel you can do it through caramelisation process, of roasting, roasting all your veggies. So, and then you just, pretty simple, just put it in a pot, put a bit of stock and... And, and blitz it up and boil it up. So it takes a wee bit of time, and probably a, a home cook couldn't do it to the extent we could do it because you've, you've got to have it nice and um, nice and flat and spread out. And, and the old home ovens don't do that, but with the big commercial oven, you can really do it really well. <laughs> Mate, well, you should see the pot we've got in there; it's massive. <laughs> That is one of the things, isn't it? If you're making soups or stews or whatever, you want to make it a decent amount in one batch. When I mean, if I do a leek and potato soup, for example, um, I do that, and it's um, I, I'll make up about seven or seven or eight liters or whatever because I've got a ten liter stock pot, and then I freeze the rest, and it's they're, they're ready go to meals. The the ability to be able to do that, I guess, on a commercial scale, though, you know, you do need to go bigger. And we and we are, I mean, we sold a before this promotion, we sold a lot of soup anyway. Um, and I was heavily promoting it for myself um, on, on, my, on my boards, and I was selling a lot. So nothing's much changed in regards to that. But it's just, yeah, you can. We've got massive pots, and we'd be making. And I, I, to be honest with you, I don't think I can make enough at the moment. I'm making it once a week. Um, yeah, that's, that's quite a lot of soup. That's a huge pot. <laughs> you don't look forward to chopping the pumpkins. Well, that is actually. I, I'm the one that makes the soup, and and it is. It's time consuming. I have to actually do all the prep the day before. And then put it all in the fridge, and then have it have it all ready to go. And, and plus, I've got to time it with my baker and my chef because they're using the oven as well. So it's it's it sounds like it should be a simple thing making soup, but for us, it's it's pretty full on. And it's not. I mean, we could make it easy. We could do just you know, cut it all up, put it in the pot, boil it all up, and it'll be a perfectly adequate soup. But we find, yeah, like I said. A little bit better roasted. I mean, anything roasted is good, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, who wants adequate when you can have beautiful? Exactly. So, um, yeah, it works for us. And um, I'm not saying that we do that to all our soups. We've got a soup called uh, immunity soup that we make that's um, that, we, that we we don't roast, we boil. But that's got all different herbs and spices and all stuff in it. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 it works for this soup, but not, not for all soups. Where did the recipe inspiration come from? I actually, because I'm a bit of a, I like to look, you know, Pinterest and Facebook and God knows what, and you just steal bits and pieces off things and merge recipes together and find it. And I just came across something on Facebook. It was, it was a chef called Matt Preston, and he said his game-changing ingredient for pumpkin soup was roasted apple. And he said the reason for that is, is, is quite simple. It's is, is, is pumpkin is a very savoury, it can be quite a savoury ingredient. And if it's by itself, it's, it's fine, but to elevate it, you need maybe a little bit of sweetness. And that's where the apple comes in. And the roasted apple just gives it that depth of flavour that just changes it from pumpkin soup to, wow, pumpkin soup. This is something in there. Oh, my God, it's fantastic. What is that? Oh, it's apple. Apple. People go, whoa, what's, that's weird, but it works. So It's a bit like uh, rhubarb and beetroot being used in different recipes that you wouldn't necessarily put together. Exactly. So, uh, it, uh, But it makes sense. Um, and it's something that I wouldn't have thought of if I hadn't read it. Um, and and, and and we tried it, and it worked really, really well. So, knock and knock it, it tastes great. <laughs> have, you, have you had some? I have, I have, and it, I have to say, it is probably the best pumpkin soup I've ever yeah. tasted. Just, but that, well, that's the real. It's pumpkin soup, and you have pumpkin soup, and it's like the good thing about pumpkin soup is it's what five, six dollars a you know, big, big pumpkin, so it's quite economical. And that's probably why the pumpkin soups are you know everyone has pumpkin soup. But to, yeah, to, you, you've got to you've got to put something with it, and and we, and we find that that the apple is is the key ingredient. So yeah, will it be uh, something you'll revisit? Oh, definitely. We we're actually making it before the soup promotion, and um, and oh, it'll it'll be a staple. I'll, pr- I'll probably have about probably about three or four soups that I rotate, and and you know. Oh, 
you get bored with making the same thing all the time, so you want to find something else. So it will st- it will be a staple, but there will be new ones there, definitely. That, and it's, it's all to do with, you know, sometimes pumpkins can be expensive. I, I think last year sometime they were $15 each. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to make pumpkin soup if it's, you know, I mean, Coomera is actually $16 a kilo at the moment, so you wouldn't be making a Coomera soup right now. So it's, it's got to be, and, and usually the cheap ingredients are seasonal stuff that's in season so it makes sense do we need to get back to doing more of that kind of thing oh totally um, a lot of the chefs around here a lot of the a lot of the, um, the, the the restaurants and all that are all it's all about seasonal and, and the reason being it's not just because it tastes great it's because it's cheap mm. I mean people at home you, I mean you shouldn't be buying strawberries right now <laughs> they don't taste great and they're out of season it's like it's pretty simple so I'll probably stop selling soup probably December and just change it to other stuff. Um, I mean, we have so much food in our cafe anyway that we can't, we can't have the same stuff all year round. Um, soup will probably make way to something, another food item on the, on the menu that's more of a, got a summer vibe to it. Um, probably, I mean, for example, in the winter we don't usually have too many salads, but in the summer we might have two or three different salads in the thing. So maybe soup will make way to, to sort of salads, and that's what people want. Um, but yeah, uh, keep it, like I said, keep it in season. And, and you were just talking off, off air there about gazpacho. Mm-hmm. I mean, something like that maybe would be what you'd probably want on a, on a, on a hot day. I mean, but, but saying that, we do get people coming in asking us for soup in the middle of a 30 degree day. And I just go, I mean, I'm sure you must really like soup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Um, before we go, just tell us a wee bit about Badger and Mackerel and the philosophy behind it. Um, well, for us, it's um, it's our our cabinet is our star. Um, I, I think we've got one of the biggest food cabinets in Omru, and and that's the wow factor when people come into our into our shop. They see they see our cabinet and they see all the food there. And, and we've been doing it for a while now. I took over from my parents. They've been doing it for a while. We know what works in a cabinet. Cabinet. We know what people look for, and we know what the palate is of, of honorary people and, and and tourists as well. And so it's got to look good. It's got to have the wow factor. We we have a menu as well, but it's not a massive menu. It's more of a brunch menu, um, breakfast sort of menu, um, which is great too. But I think our cabinet is where we where we shine, and also. Um, and also, like, our gluten-free stuff, we've got massive amounts of gluten-free, which we get massive comments from people who are celiac, and, and, and not necessarily celiac, just gluten-free people. Um, they're saying it's great. I mean, I, I can't believe we've got such a massive selection of that sort of stuff. So I mean, we make all of our own pies here as well. And, yeah, it's just a whole heap of different stuff, so it's good. And I have to say, that soup was absolutely delicious. Hit the spot on a cold September day, that's for sure. Now, our final soup in this series is the Whitestone Cheese Broccoli and Blue, and I caught up with cafe manager Stevie to find out how that came about. Well, we wanted something that's going to align with our values here at Whitestone Cheese, so um, we wanted to bring the farm to milk, to factory, to cheese, to our table. So we approached our friends at Omaru Organics who were happy to help us by putting together a white stone blue cheese with their organic broccoli soup. It's absolutely divine and it just helps align our values with the organic farming to table idea. It's all about natural ingredients, isn't it? We like to do our best there, yes. So the recipe itself, how did that one come about, do you know? We never really reveal a chef's secret. You're playing very hard to get. <laughs> but somebody, I suppose, um, if they wanted to uh, to make this, they obviously can come down to Whitestone Cheese, get the blue cheese. Is it the Windsor Blue? No, we actually use our Omaru Blue as the cheese in here. It's won a Gold Cheese Award. And I think people should come in and have a little taste test of that one. It's very popular. Uh, Some that you're also selling, not just in the cafe, but uh, you've got prepackaged. Yes, we do have other prepackaged flavours available as well. So we also do a cauliflower and tortara tasty, um, which goes down a treat when you add a little bit of parmesan on the top as garnish. Um, That's even more cheese. Is there such thing as too much cheese? I don't think so, absolutely not. I'm certainly not, while I'm sitting here at Whitestone Cheese, going to say that, that's for sure. (laughs) I would hope not. 
What's your um, go-to soup? My go-to would definitely be the blue cheese and the broccoli. The flavours of the blue cheese coming through the broccoli is just... Mwah. It's a, it's a very creamy blue, so um, I think it adds to the creaminess of the soup itself as well without having to add too much extra cream. Um, and the Omaru blue cheese, it's not super strong, but it's not mild. It's kind of on the in-between, and it just has a really nice, beautiful flavour coming through with the broccoli. Now, we've seen some development happening out at the North End. Uh, the old Cafe 469, it's changed colour. Uh, it's, it's almost like a blue cheese kind of colour, really. And some exciting stuff going to be happening out there for Whitestone Cheese. Ah, you picked up on the cheese colours. Good job. Um, yes, we're very excited to announce in the near future about the opening of our new deli and diner. We'll be moving location of the cafe out to Cafe 469 and we'll be rebranding it as the Deli Diner with a restaurant, retail, all of the cheeses are going to be there and then our menu will be catered around our different cheeses as well. So watch this space. Perfect opportunity to get some of those Christmas presents, some gifts and all sorts of things, maybe a gift voucher uh, for somebody to treat themselves or possibly you to uh, treat yourself. Yeah, we also do gift boxes of cheeses as well, um, which are going to sell like hot fire out the doors. And if somebody wants to find out a wee bit more about Whitestone Cheese, maybe do a factory tour, you do those as well. Yes, um, every day at 10 o'clock we have factory tours available. We always recommend you can ring us up and book or you can come in on the day or you can go online and find out more information and book via the internet as well. And that's it for Soup Chats for 2023. We're looking forward to being back next year as part of the Waitaki Super Soup Sipper event for 2024. And my thanks to all the restaurant and hospitality owners who've taken the time out to spend some time and talk about their soup recipes. Soup Chats was produced for the Waitaki District Council by 1-2 Media Limited. <laughs>